other than taking these um, phenomenal young people to Washington to be a part of this phenomenal event that happened way before any of them were even thought of, um, I had the, um, I guess, place, uh, honor to have a place in history with this event. Um, I went as a four-year-old. Um, I come from a family of six, and my father was, Samuel White, was a, what we called a strategic integrator, and he took his sixth brood. We were stair step children, born one year after another, and we integrated several neighborhoods, just our family by ourselves. So it was real important for my dad, for all of us, especially in those times, the, the early 50s, the early 60s, to understand kind of what was happening around us and that we had to be a part of that. But So we started early with all of us, and one of my first experiences was sitting on his shoulder at the March on Washington. And one of the things that struck me, and I'm thinking about it right now, is I don't know why, but so many of them had um, white colors on. I don't know. I don't know what that meant. I don't know what. Um, I know there were a lot of Muslims in the crowd. I understand that now, as an older person, as I got to grow and kind of look back at what was being seen. But um, I. It, that's what struck me is the is the people and the diversity of people. Again, I grew up in upstate New York, where you couldn't walk on the same street. Um, if there was a police officer and this German Shepherd dog, and in fact, my father and I were um, made to get off the street because of a police officer and that dog. And um, so again, my dad was, you know, he was just one of those kind of guys that just said, you know, I want my children to see what's going on, to not be fearful of it, um, and to just always be in the forefront of it. So that's. That's my biggest takeaway from being on those shoulders and seeing all those people. Back then, I have my father's watch that was given to me when he died many, many years ago, and this was the watch that he wore to this march. And so I'll be taking that watch with me, and um, you know, I think I'll, I'll remember standing on my, sitting on my father's shoulders again, and, and all what that, all what that brings. 50 years later. You know, look back at what ASU was when he was here and that bus boycott started all those years and years ago. And if that man, and I know he's watching over us, if, he did, if we could hear what he had to say, I think he would be just so proud that his chest would be bursting. Now, he would also say there is much, much work to do. Our students aren't graduating at the rate they need to be graduating rate. Right? We're still not doing, we're not in all the places um, politically and socially that we need to be. We still have a world of people that don't get fed every day or have, um, you know, or economic struggles. Those are the people that Dr. King truly cared about. It really didn't matter to him what their color was. But if they were, you know, not taken care of and were not being supported, then those are the people he cared about. So I think. He would still say, we've got a lot of work to do, but I think he would feel pretty confident that um, we're going to get it done.